Taking on a substantial house restoration is not everyone's ideal retirement plan, but for one couple, getting their hands dirty with the grand old Victorian was just the tonic. Each time we did come to Ballarat, we'd, there was a few selected streets that we used to drive around and houses that we you know, thought, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful one day? And this was one of those places. That, we'd always yeah. look at them and think, wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody could just restore these properties back to their original grandeur? One of the streets selected for exploring was Victoria Avenue, a small thoroughfare tucked in behind the more well-known Webster Street. Back in the mid-19th century, this whole area attracted some of Ballarat's wealthiest people and merchants, including Mr A Crawford. So where those terraces actually are, belong to Mr Crawford, uh, whose big premises were is what we know as Myers, the Myers building. Uh, that was Crawford's Emporium. He was into land sales and speculation. Uh, so he bought that whole parcel of land between Webster Street and what we know as Victoria Avenue. Crawford wasn't just an enterprising businessman, he had ambitions for the land he had just purchased on Victoria Avenue. He bought that and set up two of his daughters as teachers and set up a private school there, Ellerslie College. Originally, four terraces were built, Lumia, Ballina, Waymere and Beulah. Three still stand in similar style, but the easternmost terrace was dismantled and rebuilt in a more modern bungalow style. They have a rather colourful history um, being rented out to students and there was many a good party had here and people stop now if you're out in the garden and tell you about those good times. Like all good buildings of a certain age, Sue and Peter's Terrace required a bit of help in bringing her into the 21st century whilst maintaining her original charm. It was probably in fairly basic condition, relatively sound but largely untouched. The front um, drawing room that uh, had only ever had one coat of paint on it since the property was built. so. And that they were the types of things that appealed to us because we what? wanted to bring the place back to our original. The back of the house was completely covered by ivy. You wouldn't have known that there were windows in the house at all and the ivy was growing through into the roof cavity. The tenants said to us when they were moving out, oh, you know, be careful with the power. So we immediately got an electrician to inspect the wiring and he said no the best thing to do is get the power disconnected and he'll do a, a temporary reconnection to the front switchboard. With the electrics, plumbing and foundations all checked and rectified, it was time for Peter and Sue to turn their attention to the interior restoration, which turned up quite a few surprises. Servants' yes. bells, quite, quite interesting. The formal rooms in the house have uh, servants' bells in them and during the restoration I found some of the ceramic batteries under the house because of course there was no electricity in those days. Yeah, a really special find. That In the original drawing room there was a magnificent hand-painted stencil on the, the back of the door which was in very good condition. It had never been touched and with Sue's cleaning ability, very gently cleaned it uh, and it's come up absolutely beautiful. All the glass is original and the lead light glass uh, above the, the bay windows, there are hand painted birds. For Peter and Sue, rolling up their sleeves and tackling most of the work themselves was all part of the experience but they also had help from a band of skilled experts. Fortunately Ballarat has some absolute excellent tradespeople so far as heritage restoration is concerned. We were very fortunate to come across a very good carpenter. He's an old school carpenter, does things the old way, which that really suited Sue and I. The tiler that, uh, that we used, not very old, but he's got a very old head on his shoulders and knows how to do heritage tiling. Without the assistance of all of these tradespeople, we would never have achieved this high level that we've achieved today. Peter and Sue have not only restored this grand terrace back to its former glory, 
They've also created a home where it's easy to slip back in time to an era of grandeur and gold. I think it personifies Victorian boom time architecture with you know very high ceilings. I mean they're 17 foot ceilings, ornate cornice work, very ornate marble fireplaces which, which are all original. The money that must have been about must have been incredible because to build homes like this and you know I don't think there would have been any short cuts taken at all. You know it's a, a living history really. We're fortunate enough to be a custodian of a house like this but you know treat it with respect. I think it's just so important. It's yeah, we just love it.